Hello, everybody. Hello, Adrian. How are you? Well, how are you? I'm doing well, too. Thank Good. you. Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Yes, I'm indeed. Gonna, gonna wait. Oh, I was gonna say I was gonna wait till the clock turned to two o'clock and then it did all of a sudden. So, um, <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. I, I'm so happy to see so many people in the room. I wasn't, I was kind of thinking, oh my gosh, this is Friday afternoon of service week. Joanne and I were just chatting at the beginning uh, before people came in, um, but it is so nice to see so many people in the room. It may change a little bit about how we go about this meeting, but um, I'm glad there's so many people interested in finding out how to get started with A&OER. My name is Becky Hubling. I'm an instruction librarian and I work at the Forest Park campus and the Merrimack campus. And I'm also the coordinator for the CTL at Merrimack. And today Joanne Galanis is joining me. Um, I don't know if Joanne has the ability to turn her camera on, but if she does, we'd love do. to see her. Um, do. Joanne, do you want to introduce yourself or do you want me to introduce you? We should have sure. No, I, hi, Becky. Hello everyone, my name is Joanne Galanis. I'm a reference librarian at Flow Valley and at Forest Park. Yeah, so Joanne and I kind of, we we show up at Forest Park on opposite days um, and then we're at our other um, home campuses on those other, the other days. Um, I was thinking, let me see how many people are in the room. There's quite a few, I, but I did want to kind of hear from everybody. We have 15 people. I wonder if everybody could take, you know, 10 seconds to turn their mic on and just tell us a, a little bit about what you were hoping to get out of this session so I can kind of try to, to uh, match it up with uh, what really happens today. I think if you guys don't mind, I will just go down the list in alphabetical order and call on you and just to hear really briefly about what you have hope to get out of the session and maybe um, your discipline, um, if you have a particular discipline you're interested in finding out more about. So I'll start with John Berger. Well, hello. Hello. I am. I'm with the math department, and we use a we. If I'm not mistaken, we use several OER textbooks these days. And and I'm I'm just now trying to get more familiar with it. So this is more for me. This is just a more an. Uh oh. I, I've lost John, but I I know that you're. Has, has anybody else? It's, is it me that? <laughs> Is it me that's frozen or, every, or can you guys hear me OK? Yes. Yes, I okay. hear you. OK, thanks, John. You were just cutting out a little bit, but I did get that you're in the math department and um, you're just interested in finding out more because some of the math classes are moving to OER. That's, okay. That is exactly correct. Perfect. You've interpreted exactly what I've said. <laughs> Great. Um, and Nancy, you're up next. <clears throat> thanks, Becky. Um, I teach chemistry. We are interested in knowing what textbooks are out there that are OER and how to find them and how what if the evaluation is different than what we usually do. OK, great. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Kimberly Foster. Kimberly, yes, I don't know. Um, yes. We, we are interested in biology and determining what textbooks are out there and trying to find one that will accommodate fully our needs for our classes at this time. OK, great. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, Kim Halliman's here. Um, she is one of the organizers of this session. Kim, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I'm just a big proponent of OER and, and, and I'm on the committee and I you know, I want to see what people are doing so that we can share. We have people here who are using it successfully, and the more we can share, uh, the better we'll be at implementing. Thanks, and thanks for being here. Um, you can probably answer some questions too as we go along. Kim's a, a member, a very important member of the A and OER Council. Um, I think Kathleen Hatch is up next. Hi, uh, I'm a new faculty here and uh, I teach biology and microbiology and I've been looking at the OER resources and I've already found one that I'd like to Ooh. use, but I'm not sure how to make it like certain parts of it accessible to my students. And I'm also interested in finding out if there's a way to like 
cherry pick some chapters or chunks of information from uh, OER resources and bundle it for my students. So I, I don't know, just sort of interested in everything. Sure, that sounds great. So it's good we've got we've got two bio people. Um, this session we might not get to all of that, Kathleen or Kate, but um, we will. Um, you you and I could talk about that a specific thing like that, and that's good for everybody to know that when you get into those kind of more detailed questions, you can meet with a, a librarian or someone else from the A and OER Council to get more help. But I will talk a little bit about that that question that you have for sure. Um, Rob, you're up next. Rob Hurdle. Yeah, I think we just like to learn more in hospitality about what's available, and uh, it certainly would benefit our students. Yeah, and I think that you guys use um, one of the library licensed resources, and at least I think a couple. I think we found a couple for you guys, but I'll talk about that too. And and I'm not sure what's available otherwise, but we'll we'll try to figure that out. Uh, Julie High is up next. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and I'm from the Physical Therapist Assistant Program, and I got an email from Becky that said, hey, we might have an OER in your field. Uh, where, are you interested? And I said, absolutely. Anything that can help our students because we have a lot of textbooks and they are very expensive. So just looking to help uh, see what's out there. See what, yeah, yeah, it's funny. Uh, in different disciplines, it turns out that sometimes the publishers allow us to by library licensed copies, and that's what's happened with Julian with Rob. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. Um, Paul Huddleston's up next. Hi, I'm mainly here uh, to see what I can advocate for for the students that come in. We, I'm, I'm with MassCom. I manage the radio station at Flow Valley, and um, we generally don't have many textbooks in MassCom. Um, but if there are open resources, I know. Uh, some of the other instructors are have been looking into that and I just want to be able to advocate for students that I encounter who have questions about open areas. OK, OK, good, great. I have some ideas about that, too. I might have shared them with you yesterday, but I but I, it'll be good for everybody to hear that also. Um, and then I see Michael's here and it's, he's a guest, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, Hi, I'm, I'm Michael Hauser, like Nancy um, Callie, right? I teach chemistry and uh, I really think that textbook prices are really becoming a hurdle to education for our students. Um, actually, I'm kind of um, I actually watched the Academos uh, seminar earlier today and I'm not I'm happy the school is taking an approach to trying to reduce textbook textbook costs. And I think, of course, of course, OER can do that as well. Yeah, great. OK, good. So we've got two bio people, two chem people. So I'm going to try to hit some of those topics, too, for sure. Um, Lucy Nan Steele's here. I'm not an H. I can't speak. You're Everybody not what? else was an H. Oh. Everybody else was H's. <laughs> well, we've gotten to I'm, the ends. We've gotten to the ends. I'm very interested in the Creative Commons licensing and in anything that makes learning more affordable. Great. We're going to talk a little bit about Creative Commons. It's so complicated. We could do a whole session on it all by itself. Okay. <laughs> um, Amy. Hello, I'm Amy Pierce. I'm a learning experience consultant in online education, and I'm interested in hearing what faculty um, are considering for resources in their classes and also for possible resources for our course of records. Great. And Betsy. Uh, I am, oh, I take notes for the uh, ANOER Council and I work in the library, so I'm just here out of curiosity to see what everybody talks about. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Adrian. Hi, Becky and everybody. So I uh, teach English, uh, everything from 030 to 102. And um, I understand that the English departments across the district, we have an abundance of things already um OER and so I feel a little bit overwhelmed by it and I want to know how to break this down into a smaller size that can fit me so I'm not spending a whole lot of time and energy in searching for something but I really just want to get my hands on something good real quickly and maybe uh begin to use it this summer okay okay great um I have a couple ideas about that, and um, if I don't mention them today, Adrian, you know, yeah, ping me I'll on email. I know where to yeah. find you. <laughs> you know where to find me, yeah. And Jenna. 
Hi, I teach sociology. Um, I've used two OERs in the past, um, but it was, I don't know, kind of daunting to, to find um, free resources that covered everything I wanted. So I just kind of wanted to see what everyone else has done and, and um, how they've kind of traversed those problems as well. Okay, great. Sociology. All right. I um just trying I haven't I'm just trying to think about people I've worked with in sociology and I don't have anything right at the top of my head. So it might be interesting to hear about, you know, as we get into the conversation what you've used. Um, but um thanks so oh, and I think some more people may have joined. Is anyone here who hasn't introduced themselves yet? Michelle, maybe? Hi, this is Michelle Henriquez and I am the nursing retention coach on the Florissant Valley campus. So I just wanted to sit in a lot of times I share resources with students and try to help them to find cost effective ways to utilize resources in their studying. So just want to sit in to see if I hear anything that I might be able to share with the students or faculty. OK, great. Perfect. Um, there are some nursing textbooks. There's a lot of nursing resources available in OER, and I think the nursing department is kind of moving in that direction. And then I see that um, Jen Conroy and Dana Easterling have joined us from the libraries. Would you guys like to just jump in and introduce yourself? And then? Sure, I'll, I'll start, Dana. Um, my name is Jennifer Conroy. Uh, I know some people on here. I'm the library manager at Flow Valley Campus, and I'm just trying to learn as much about OER as possible so that I can support, best support the students and faculty. So thanks. thanks. Exactly. And I am Dana Easterling. I'm the district secretary for the libraries and ditto what Jen said. <laughs> Great. I'm so glad to have so many library here, people here supporting us. And then um, I see Loranda's joined us. Loranda, thanks for coming. Do you want to introduce yourself and Tell us why you're why you are interested in coming to this session today. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks, Becky, for throwing it over. Um, no, I, I love OER. Um, I use uh, free resources in my cultural anthropology class. Um, so any way I can support, I'm happy to do it. Great, thanks. All right, let's get this thing rolling then. Um, thank you guys so much for and I, if people pop in, we'll just have to we'll just have to keep going. I think maybe somebody just popped in, but I want to get the slides rolling. Um, today I'm using PowerPoint Live for the first time, um, so I want to let you guys know that it's a little bit more interactive and the idea is that you can move through the slides. I don't know if anyone has tried this. You can move through the slides on your own at your own pace. And also the links to the links that I have embedded in the slides should work for you. So if you want to, you know, if things are too slow or too fast, you can go backwards and forwards and and check some things out. So I wanted, and we'll see how that goes. It's, not, it's the first time I've done this, so I, I hope it works well. Um, and Janice Hovis was going to join us today for this session, but she's not feeling well. So Joanne and I are going to be the people um, running this show today. All right, so um, since we have a lot of variety of experience in the room, I wanted to start just with some kind of definitions, maybe definitions that are uh, a little bit special for St. Louis Community College too. But we throw around this acronym like we do with all acronyms at St. Louis Community College. Um, we throw it around all the time and we just say A and OER. And um, I want to make sure everybody knows what it is that we're talking about when we use that acronym. So the A in A and OER stands for affordable, and then the OER part is open educational resources, and we're going to drill down and take a look and see what those mean more specifically. So when we talk about affordable resources, those are good, right? They, they provide some um, relief for our students from high textbook costs. Um, it's good to uh, provide those affordable resources to our students. It can mean a couple of things at St. Louis Community College. It could mean that it's free to our students, so really, really affordable, um, but not open. And those are things like um, links to articles from the databases, links to videos and films from the databases. And for you guys who are here from the sciences especially, I want you to know that um, we have a really good um, video database called <coughs> Jove that I've probably shared with you before, but it can be really good at supporting um, if you're using an OER text that doesn't have a lot of um, video support. That's a, an example of a 
library licensed resource that the library pays for, but students don't pay for when they use it. Um, and then we also have ebooks in the library that we can sometimes purchase, rarely purchase, but sometimes we can purchase ebooks with unlimited simultaneous use licenses. And um, when Julie mentioned, Julie, I mentioned that I, I contacted her and I said, hey, I've got this book that you use for your textbook, but I can um, make it free to your students. That's an example of um, that an ebook with unlimited simultaneous use license. The same is true for Rob, one of Rob's textbooks, Rob Hurdle's textbooks. So the librarians have been um, going through the list of all the textbooks that faculty have requested and taking a look to see if we can purchase those ebooks with those special licenses that allow for unlimited simultaneous use. That's really the only way you can use a library book as a textbook and have it be equitable for all students. Um, when we have, it, it is nice to put books on course reserve. Students can get access to them, but it's not really fair because um, students who have the ability to purchase the book, have the money to purchase the book, do have an advantage to having that book at home with them 24 hours a day, while students who are relying on using them in, on the reserve desk um, can only use them when the library is open and can only use them for two hours at a time and can't mark them up. So um, it, it's it's nice to have books on reserve, but it's better when we can provide unlimited simultaneous use to those ebooks. The other definition for affordable at STLCC is that it might be low cost to students. And um, the A and OER Council worked to create this definition of $40 or less. So um, that's the other thing that we talk about when we talk about affordable um, educational resources. And I will say, you know, I, I, I kind of um, spent a long time talking about um, library licensed resources, but there are other resources that are available for free to students um, that are not available through the library. And um, I imagine lots of you guys use those things too. They're not open. Um, they still are under copyright, um, but they, um, they they are free to students. So that's another example of affordable, but not open. Open educational resources I think of as better because, um, well, they're teaching, learning, and research materials that are either in the public domain, so they don't have any copyright um, restrictions on them at all, or they're licensed in a manner that provides everyone with free and perpetual permission to retain, revise, remix, reuse, and redistribute. And those words starting with R, we call those the five R's in the world of open educational resources. And they they really just make um, those resources that people have been so generous to create and then um, grant a Creative Commons license um, that they make them very flexible and um, when you provide that kind of educational resource to a student, they can have it for as long as they want. Um, they can switch it up and change it and you can switch it up and change it um, any way you want. And so when we are lucky enough to find those resources that the author has made available to us in that very flexible way, we're really happy. You know, I just noticed that there might be a question in chat and I'm going to run over there. Um, Glenna asked a question, is that $40 for all classes or per class? Um, it's $40 for all the course materials for one particular class. If, does that answer your question, Glenna? So if you're teaching, say you're teaching, um, I know because I've visited your class, so I know sometimes you teach Smart Start. So if that Smart Start textbook is $40 or less, then um, that would be considered an affordable uh, course. And I'll talk more about how you can share that information with students. Um, OK, so somebody said I can't remember they were interested in learning a, a little bit more about Creative Commons. Creative Commons is an organization. It's a nonprofit organization um, that provides Creative Commons licenses. And so those are the licenses that copyright holders grant to their works, to their creative works. And those licenses say that um, you can use that information more freely than you could if it were if it just remained strictly under copyright. So it gives every person and organization in the world a free, simple and standardized way to grant copyright permissions um, for creative and academic works. It ensures that if you do that, then you are um, properly 
you're given attribution um, because you're, you're the person who created that material. Um, it allows other people to copy and redistribute and remix and change that information um, to fit the needs that they have. Um, so Creative Commons is really an organization and they create these licenses that we can impose on our works. We can also search for other people's works that have been granted Creative Commons licenses. Um, OK, so so here we go. So to get started with affordable resources, I wanted to start there. Um, so those are the things that are um, especially library licensed things. Um, you can always ask a librarian um, uh, to help you find these library things that might be that might provide a really good affordable solution for your students. Um, but you can also search the library's collection, and I would probably start out with an Archer search. That's the big search box on the um, website to search for ebooks and videos and articles that you might want to use for your course materials. <clears throat> and anything that's available in our, our electronic resources should be um, sh you should be able to use as a um, part of a text for your class. And the best way to do that would be to provide links to to provide permanent links to those items through your Canvas course. That's probably the easiest way to do that. You can also, if you don't find what you're looking for in our library resources, you can ask a librarian to find out if we can purchase and add those things to our collections. So if you're curious about a particular text that you think might be available in electronic format and you want to know if we can um, find that with those unlimited simultaneous use um, licenses, then you can just ask us and I think the best thing to do would be to contact one of the full time librarians to ask that question, the full time instruction librarians, and that would be Joanne Galanis, who's here with us today, or Janice Hovis or me, uh, Becky Helbling. Um, we'd probably be the people who would be um, best to answer that question. Um, instead of using Ask a Librarian, I'd probably for that kind of detailed question, I'd go right to one of the instruction librarians. To get started with open educational resources, one thing you can do is visit the A and OER guide. Um, and, and after I finish these slides, and they're going to run out pretty soon, uh, we can go and look at some of these things. I can share my screen and we can look at these things. But the A and OER guide has a, a front page that gives you links to some of the, the things that are also on this page, like the larger collections that you can search. So. Um, I, I like to start with those larger collections and there you will find overlap between those three collections of open. So for example, lots of the books that are included in uh, um, or lots of the OpenStax books, you may find versions of them in LibreText and you may find a, a path to them through the open textbook library. But I do think it's worth checking out each one of those and looking in your subject area to see what's available. Um, in my mind, those are the those are my first three starting places. I will I'll, I will say, though, that sometimes if I get if I um, have a subject that I'm having trouble finding a lot of things for, I just try Googling the subject plus the acronym OER. And it's funny that lots of times I come up with different results than I would in some of the bigger um, OER collections. And so sometimes I get something really interesting that way. So um, and those links on that slide, if you guys, if, if this um, presentation is going too slowly for you, you could click on any of those links um, and, and take a look at those collections and look and see what's available in your subject area. Another suggestion I have is that if you are getting a little bit interested and excited about providing some A and OER resources for your students, um, I, I think a really next a good next step would be to attend a conference. There's a Missouri A and OER conference coming up on March 9th, um, and that link there will take you to the page where you can register. Registration is free, and that conference this year is virtual. I've attended that conference for at least three years. I think the first time I attended the conference was the last time that it was in person. It was in early March of 2020, right before everything shut down. Um, and and since then, it's always been virtual, um, but it's also always been free or very low cost, kind of in keeping with this idea of uh, providing good resources 
um, in, an, in an affordable way. So I, I would definitely suggest attending that conference if you feel like you're interested. One thing that's nice about attending the Missouri conference is that you'll find out what people are doing at other colleges in Missouri. Um, because sometimes when I talk to people about A and OER, they are hesitant to use it because they worry about um, the quality of the resources that are available and they worry about transfer articulation agreements and things like that. But it's um, I think it's interesting to, to find out how many other public institutions in Missouri are really interested in moving for public and private actually institutions in Missouri are interested in and moving forward with um, A and OER uh, materials. And then a bigger conference that you can attend that usually happens in October, and I don't think the date has been set yet, is the Open Education Conference. So that's a national kind of um, big open education conference, but also really accessible, um, very low cost, and it also is virtual. And then another thing you can do, which I have done, and probably I, I imagine lots of people on the ANOER Council and other librarians have done, is join the CCC OER community email. That's the Community College Consortium for OER community email. And if you do that, you will you can get a digest email every day. You do get an email every day. So if your email box is overwhelming to you, you may not want to do this. But um, if you do it and read those emails for a couple of a week or so, you'll understand how generous the OER community is with one another in sharing um, resources that they've found. And you can once you join that community email, you can post questions. Um, you can get help from some of the leaders in the OER community, and they're really good, great resources that are available through that listserv. OK, so what's next? So um, after today, if you uh, explore some of these resources and you find something that you want to try using and you decide to adopt a low cost or no cost course materials for maybe just do it for one section, um, you can add the low or the free characteristic to your course in the interactive schedule. And what that does is um, well, it allows students to see right up front before they register for your class that your course material materials are low cost or free to them. But there's also a way in the interactive schedule that students can search using that criteria so they can say, well, I know I'm going to take. Um, sociology, Jenna, I'll pick on you. I know I'm going to take sociology. I want to see if anyone's uh, and I'm sorry, picking on Lauranda too. I want to see if anybody is um, offering sociology 101 with free course materials. And so they limit to free and they get a list of all the courses that have that attribute attached to them. Um, the way you get those um, characteristics added to your course in the schedule is by communicating with your schedule builder and then your schedule builder lets Adrian Sims know um, she works in the registrar's office and um, then that characteristics gets added to your um, course. And now we've got a little bit of time. I think it's yeah, it's just 2.30, so we have 20 more minutes. Um, if you guys want to ask some questions, um, I can stop sharing my slides or keep sharing them. I don't know if people are using the links or going back and forth in the um, slides or if that worked. Um, but are there does anyone have any questions or are there some of those resources that you're really interested in taking a look at? Then we can go look at them together. Yeah, Becky, I would like it. I don't have a question, but I would like it if you would um, go back to some of those links and then click on some while I just kind of watch. I think that's uh, a later I'll go back and click on them myself, but just to kind of see them. Sure, sure. So I'm going to. I think I'm actually going to stop sharing my slides because I can probably remember all the the different links that well, let me go back and just refresh my memory so I make sure. So we got the conferences and the community email and the guide. Um, yeah, I think we'll start with the guide probably. So I'm going to stop sharing this particular slideshow, um, but I will. Um, the the I will send you guys the slides so that you have quick access to those links too after the session. Um, 
I'm going to stop presenting and I'm going to share my um, other screen. Give me a second. Okay, so sorry, I'm just getting myself organized here. Okay, um, Joanne and anybody else, maybe Loranda, Loranda and I are in lots of meetings together. If you guys could monitor chat, I can't see it right now. If you just let me know if there's questions or hands get raised um, in chat. But um, what we're looking at right now is the library guide for the op affordable and open educational resources. Um, and we're on the start here button right here. So we've got those definitions again of what it means to be affordable and open. And then here we've got these links to the three um, uh, big collections that I talked about. So we've got open stacks, which is if people are at all familiar with OER, they're probably most familiar with open stacks, which is a project based at Rice University. Um, so we can go take a, I think I think I'll be able I think you'll see this. So this is the OpenStax um, website and it's really easy to navigate. You can just click here on subjects um, and we can go to social sciences and see there's a third edition of a sociology textbook. I know I've got some there's an anthropology textbook too. Um, and then if you um, choose the sociology textbook. I mean, one thing that's nice about OpenStax is that it's pretty robust in terms of um, ancillary materials that are available. So um, you get the book details here. There are different ways that you can access the book. You can view it online. You can download a PDF. And students who really like to have that print book can order a print copy, and it's still pretty affordable. So, you know, there are disadvantages and advantages to online ebooks, um, but OpenStax always allows you both versions, and you can let students make a decision about which version they want. Um, the online and PDF version are free, and then the, there's a nominal cost for that print version. Looks like there's one more option. I don't know a book share. I don't even know about that. That's something that's I don't maybe new, but it looks like it might be a uh, audio version. I'm not sure. Um, but the other thing that's nice about OpenStax is that it has instructor resources, um, and they they differ for every book. They're not exactly the same for every book. But for example, this particular text has a Canvas course cartridge, so it um, you can upload that course cart. You, first, you download it to your computer and then upload it to um, Canvas, and it has every section of the text then um, set up in your Canvas course. And I've worked with a couple of um, faculty members who have been thinking about OER, and we've um, uploaded those into some practice courses. Um, so if, if you want help doing that with uh, one of your courses, I'd be happy to help you do that. And then um, here you've got a link to the OER Commons Hub where you'll there's an OpenStax community. And if other people have created ancillary materials for this text, you can find them there. Those would be outside of the OpenStax um, portal here. Um, but those are just people who've been working with the text probably for a while and have created some things that you might want to look at. Um, this one has an instructor getting started guide. Uh, it's got some lecture slide slides that you can use. Assessment banks, so that's probably something like a test bank that you can download. Um, and then somebody, I can't remember who was asking about customizing, like how can I, oh, I think it was Kate Hatch. How can I, um, kind of pick parts of a book and you can definitely do that um, with OpenStax and with any you should be able to do that with any OER text that you can kind of manipulate what's there and only present to your students that the stuff that you want to include. So um, that's how this works in OpenStax here. And then there's also um, a collection of student resources. Um, so the, there's a getting started guide for students. 
and some other things. Um, and, and these differ also depending on the text in the OpenStax collection. So um, does anybody have any questions about OpenStax? Are we ready to move on to a? Uh, Becky, mm -hmm. I don't have a question. I just have a comment mm -hmm. that I want to share with everybody. Please. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love you too, Lorena. <laughs> Thanks. You guys are. I, I love everybody in this room too, just for being here and being interested in OER. But um, yeah, Lorenda and I get to work together a lot, and um, I'm I'm glad. I'm glad. So it sounds like maybe I showed Lorenda something new today about sociology. I'm not sure. Okay. Yes, um, I didn't yeah. know about this one. I was just using the one for anthro. We, oh, okay. we have a um, a low cost social book. Uh, the textbook that we're using at Flow is twenty five. Dollars. Oh, oh, I keep saying good. that. I'm sorry. It's under fifty dollars uh, for our students, but uh, Annie and I did not know about this option. So, and we just had a session yesterday. So, I, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative of, of you okay. for this. Awesome. Yeah. So, did you, you were at the session, one of the content um, specific um, meetings yesterday? Yes. Right. Yeah. And then you've got another sociologist jumping in this OpenStax is the one that she, um, Jenna's used and she likes it. So there's a there's a review. I should have added that to my list of how to get Perfect. started with OER. I would say, and, and Nancy kind of referred to this question, I would say um, it's worthwhile just re like picking two books and reviewing them as you would review any other textbook. You know, just go through it really carefully like you would with any other textbook. Um, just just to get a sense of whether or not you want you want to go that direction. Um, and I can't think of any other um, criteria you might use in your in your review, although you you may just want to make sure that everything is accessible. Maybe talk with um, Scott Armstead um, from the access office to make sure if you have an electronic resource that you've chosen as OER, that the creator of that OER has been careful in making it accessible. I think with um, OpenStax and LibreText, you're, it's probably, a, there's probably a better chance that those things are uh, made accessible. Someone's taken a good look at that, but that that is maybe one concern. Um, oh, Glenna asked the question, how do we do that? How do we preview the book? Well, if we go back, if for, I'll just show you an open stacks. It's going to be different for every single one. But if we go to open stacks, um, you can do any of these things. You could view it online. Um, so it's running me through some highlights. Um, but here's the book and here's the chapter outline. And I can jump to um, chapter three and read about what is culture. Um, and then I think also as part of reviewing the book, you would want to review those instructor resources too. But it's as you know, right now we're we're in the book, we're reviewing it right now. It's got a search function, so I could search for some different um, words if I want to know if they're covering something in particular. Um, I can um, close or open the table of contents. Do you see I'm doing that right there? Um, and then I could also um, download a PDF copy um, if I and that's really good. I mean that as long as that PDF copy is accessible and some of the um, LECs in the room might be able to help me with that a little bit. But if the PDF is accessible, it's probably a really good option for your students to download a PDF so they don't have to be connected to the Internet while they're accessing the book. Right, because when I view it online, I have to have a stable internet connection. But if I download the book, I can take my laptop away without an internet connection and use it that way. Um, okay, so Glenn, I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, we'll just jump in and let me know. Um, one, more, one more comment on downloading the PDF. It's easy to scan through it quickly when it's on your computer than waiting each web page to load when you're when you if you want to read yeah. it online. Definitely. Yeah, great point, John. Thanks for throwing that in there. Definitely. Um, all right, I'm going to go back to 39. So I'm going to go back to our guide. And um, I think the next thing I want to look at is the LibreText collection. Um, I don't like the layout of the LibreText collection as well. I think it looks kind of 
I don't know. I, I, the OpenStax, I think, uh, is the cleanest kind of um, presentation of, of material. But um, this is maybe my second go-to place is LibreText. Um, but you can um, hover over this button here to explore the libraries. Um, and let's go to, we got a couple biology people in the room, so we can go see what's available for biology. Um, and I usually go to the bookshelves. The campus bookshelves will take you to collections that are used, I think, at particular campuses, but I usually just go to the general bookshelves. Um, and then I get, uh, these are, each one of these tiles is a different book. Um, and somebody said something about microbiology, so we can go take a look at that text. Oh, and maybe that was just, the, okay, so I'll take that back. So when I clicked on microbiology, I was just clicking on the subject area of microbiology. So I was drilling down into a, a sub um, category of biology. Um, but these are um, links to different um, books. So there's a book by Kaiser. Um, so I guys, I don't know anything about these books, um, but I do know that here's the microbiology um, book from OpenStax. So that will just take you back to the OpenStax book, but they're they're trying to kind of have this portal here to include all the, the ones that they found. And then there's um, microbiology from a different publisher, Boundless, and then another by another author, Bruce Lind. And so if we, let's just go into here. I'm going here because I see, oh, that this has some exercises that go with it. So that might be attractive to me. So I'm gonna click on that microbiology and we can look through it. Um, but it's just organized like a book and you know, just like in OpenStax, I can read it right here on the page. Um, if I, I can open unit one. Um, and I get, just keep drilling down till I get to the content. And I think if I click here, you know, all these books are set up differently, but I think if I click here, I get to, and I keep clicking to get to this content here. Um, so that's how to use that particular resource. And then we've got some, um, once you get into the book, you've got some options for downloads, an option to import it into the LMS, to buy a print copy, to print some of the files. So there's lots of different ways that you can access it. Um, you can look here. Becky? Yes. I hate to interrupt, but could you click on buy a print copy and see how much this would cost just so we get some idea yeah. of what it costs when it's an open resource? Yes. So it says the base cost is $28.92. Um, and that gives you a paperback copy in black and white, it looks like. Um, I can get a hardcover for $8 more and I can get color pages for $13 more. So that would still be that $40 mark. Uh, depending on how you like if I let's see if I get if I want it not if I got the color pages, but but it doesn't that doesn't matter Glenn, in, in terms of marking your course as free because um, because you're using an OER text, they do have access to the book for free. Um, if they choose to kind of upgrade to that print copy, it's that doesn't prevent you from marking your course as being a free course if you use that OER text. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's great. I, yeah. I mean, there are always going to be some students who want hard copies, right? My daughter right. is that kid. My son is not. So, and maybe it's just because she was born four years before him and he was a digital native, you know, and she, right. <laughs> and she wasn't. But, you know, it just those four years. But uh, yeah, that gives yeah. some options. Yes, yeah. But 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 just because um, if I kind of max out the all the, you know, get a hardcover, color copy, if I decide I want to do that, it doesn't prevent you from marking your courses free if you're asking them to use this particular text. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so um, somehow my browser's gotten stuck here, so I'm just going to go back to um, go back to my guide. Are you guys still seeing? Oh no! Somehow I opened up a oh it opened up in a new window, so you guys weren't even seeing what I was seeing in terms of 
I'm sorry. In terms of cost, but um, it's okay. You yeah, read it yeah, out. Yeah. It's fine. But we got it. You. you don't have yeah. to show us the screen. You guys probably thought I was crazy. Like, what is she talking about? Um, yeah, I was, I could, it opened in a new window. So forgive me, um, but that's how much they cost. And then finally, we can go to the Open Textbook Library, which is a project at the University of Minnesota. It's another kind of um, place where they collect books and all different kinds of um, from all different sources and try to collect them in one place. You can browse subjects. Um, who am I? Who have I left out so far? Chemistry. You can go see what's available in chemistry. Um, and I don't know how, like, maybe I can make this a little bit bigger. I just want to point out, this is the um, the license. This is the Creative Commons license. Um, and all these letters tell you what the license is telling the reader. And so it's a Creative Commons license. It requires attribution. So if you use this, you need to um, let your readers know that Wettstein is the creator of this text. And NC, I think, is non-commercial use, so you can only use it for a non-commercial reason. But this is an example of a textbook. Um, I don't know if that's one that looks interesting to the chemistry faculty. Um, here's an organic chemistry text. Introductory chemistry might be interesting to look at. I'm just scrolling through to see what's here. I don't know. Um, and maybe if we don't find anything we like here, we want to go back to OpenStax and see what's there. Um, but you can see there's there's more here than we have in those other collections. This is a bigger collection, but it might be a little bit more varied in the um, kind of the specificity of the textbook like I don't know if we're teaching analytical chemistry 2.1 at St. Louis Community College but um, the open the, the advantage to the open stacks books is that they're really geared for those large enrollment classes first and second year general education classes I think um all right what other so we got about five more minutes um are there other places you guys would like me to visit um or questions that you have. Could, could you show us the Creative Commons? Because I looked at it the other day and was so overwhelmed. I didn't sure. even know. Sure. <laughs> um, let me see. I'm going to go to the Creative Commons link that I put in the slideshow so that it. Um, I went there through the link that John Martin provided. OK. Um, well, you guys now are seeing um, the link that's from, this is the link that is from my slideshow. I don't know if this is the same one that John Martin provided, um, but this, these are, this is what this picture right here. Um, can you guys see my mouse circling the, um, the first one, the CCBY um, is the yes. simplest Creative Commons license option. So it's just, it's saying that if I'm the copyright holder and I put this license on, you can use it and all you have to do is give me attribution for using it. So I must give it to the creator of this work. Um, this one CC, and, and Glenna, is this what you were, I, I hope I'm talking about what you're interested in knowing about, but there, there are different levels of Creative Commons licenses. I'm um, not, I wasn't curious about the licenses. I was curious about finding the material. Oh. Like I teach developmental English and there are a tremendous number of writing textbooks and composition books out there, but many of them are above the head of my students. Okay. Um, you know, I think you find this stuff that you don't find texts on the Creative Commons website. So the Creative Commons website is really just about those licenses and how to choose the right one for your needs or your desires or how to interpret them when you find them on um, works that you come across. Becky? Um, yes. Um, I, I wonder if Glenna is maybe referring to OER Commons, which... Oh does have kind of a, a way to to drill down into into disciplines and and subject areas and and level of courses yeah. and that that can be pretty overwhelming i'm not sure if that's what you're referring to glenna but but i wonder if that might be it 
I mean, it could be. I mean, I used one of his links and I was just, I, I put in developmental English and I got all sorts of science books about and, and marketing textbooks about development and then I got, so I put in um, English and composition and I got all these things about chemistry composition. <laughs> <laughs> things yeah. like chemical compositions. I was like, what words do I use to get yeah. what I'm looking for? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, and this is something I thought about putting on a slide and I didn't put on a slide, but I would, another way to get started, how to get started with A and OER is attend your uh, professional conferences, whether that's in person or online or um, somehow connect with your professional organization. Um, so if there, I know there is a developmental education professional organization, connect with them and then find the people who are doing OER there. That is another really good way to find some of the best OER resources. I, Glenna, if it was the OER commons that you were getting overwhelmed by, I, I get totally overwhelmed um, by that place too. And that's why I didn't include it as one of the links. Um, there are a couple different search engines that you'll find on the guide. Um, that will help you um, find a lot of things like uh, Oasis is one and the Mason OER MetaFinder is another one if you see that on this page. Um, but so, you get so many results from them and sometimes I find so few of them are useful to me that I, I, I tend not to use it. And maybe if I have a very, very hard question um, that a faculty member brings to me, I might use it, but um, I, I try to avoid that and stick with the bigger ones. Um, but I would say to to network with the faculty who are in your discipline area, whether that's networking uh, here at STLCC to find out what people are doing, which I, a lot of that happened yesterday at those content specific section sections, or um, if you network at a conference or on a listserv, you can also go back and search the CCC OER community email um, listserv to to have questions answered too. Oh, and Mike pointed out that the STLCC Live Guide also offers links by discipline. It's not, um, it doesn't have every discipline and it doesn't have every source for every discipline. It's just, um, but it might provide a starting point depending on, on what your discipline is. All right, well, it's 2.51, so I think we're officially one minute over, but I am more than happy to stick around and answer questions and hear from you guys. Um, but I also know it's Friday afternoon and uh, we're all and getting And everything's ready for going classes. live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I definitely, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now you know, so I can see you guys all again. Um, Oh, but not very many people have their <laughs> cameras turned on, but that's okay. Um, there's some of you. Thanks, Glenna. Did I so you could see me? Um, is, if we want to, like, act like I could not possibly, obviously, have this ready for next week, right? This is my course for this coming semester is done. You know, I still have to deliver it, obviously. But if I want to work on this for the fall. Um, are librarians available to work with me on this? Am I yes. sort of out there on my own to try to figure it out? Is I don't think that there is actually a district-wide uh, person who is working on A and OER for developmental ed students, and I would say the vast majority of those students need this the most, yeah. um, more than any other students. I mean, half of them don't have you know internet access at home, and they use you know our laptops, our learner laptops, and things like that. So this would obviously you know there's nothing better than free for them. Um, so yeah, how would I go about setting up a time to meet with you or somebody else? Send me an email. To do this. Send okay. me an email, Glenna, because we're both at Merrimack, and <laughs> you, I yeah. actually just moved downstairs, so you're just two doors down from oh, me now. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, pop in. <laughs> you don't even have to send me an email. That's great. Thanks. All right, any other questions? Well, I thank you so much for coming. I've just had such a great service week. Uh, I've been so uh, thrilled to see the great attendance at all these sessions about A and OER and some good things have been going on here at Merrimack. So um, you, yeah, it's, it's a good way to end the week for me, for sure, to see all of you guys. So thank you very much for coming. And best of luck on Tuesday when everything uh, opens up and you are back in business. Thank you too, Becky. This was wonderful. Great.
and yeah, you know, just send us a direct email if you guys want some, you know, want to work one on one on, on finding some new things. Thanks for a great session, Becky. Thank you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope, I hope you take a look at that book, Lorenda. That's exciting. I'm going to. And uh, Jenna, I'll probably reach out to you. And Kate, you know, you had that question about how do I cherry pick stuff? If you same thing, if you want to shoot me an email and we can sit down and look at it, I'd be happy to do that. I have a closing remark, Becky. Yes. That, that is really not that relevant to you. But did you know that you can use Microsoft Edge to annotate a PDF? I don't know if I knew that. I don't know Would if I Would you like me that. to show you real quick? When sure. when Glenna was talking about writing on a PDF, I thought, oh, I, I have a trick, but I didn't want it was kind of off the subject, but I can show it to you in case you ever want to pass it on to somebody else. Okay, sure. Yeah, I you know, missed that. I missed that. There must that must have been in chat, and I didn't see it. Did yeah. So Glenna yeah. asked a question about writing on a PDF. Okay. It'll it'll only take a second. Honest to God. Great. I always like to learn something new. All I'd have to do is tell it I want to share. I think. I think you see this now. Yep. This is this. This is a PDF, right? Right. And instead of just opening it up, I go down to open with, and I open with Microsoft Edge. And what happens, you get to do draw. Oh. And 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 or you can do highlight, or you can do erase. And if I had my if I had my digitizing tablet hooked up, I could write on it. But in the at the moment, I will just use my mouse to show you like every session I went to, I went went on and made a green check mark. But if I uh -huh. if I had my pen and tablet, I could write all over the place. And when wow. I'm done, if I do save, it saves it. And I always keep the original copy, I'm closing out of this one. I always keep the original copy and an annotated copy. And my annotated copy, the date keeps changing because as the more I put on it, of course, the bigger it gets. But I always keep the original in case of it says, can you go back and see, show me what it looked like before you, before you wrote all over it? <laughs> That's and I great. Said, Yes, I can. But so the next time, if you have a PDF and you, and you, and you, I do have a digitizing tablet. I just don't have it hooked up at the moment. And you have you are right, right on a screen, or or um, you might have a Wacom, or or you know any of those tools that you can use. If you can open it up with Microsoft Edge, you can write on it just like any any document you want. Wow. And then when you annotated it the first time, did Microsoft Edge give it the new name or did you give it the new name? I gave it the name. I, okay. I, I always have a hard time keeping track of what I'm doing. So when I know I'm going to use something in a class, I always make a copy of it and call it annotated. And okay. you know, if you if you can always go back and make the things go away too. But but and as I said, all I have is my mouse. But if I, I do have uh, both a Wacom and a digitizing tablet at home, and I can I can write all kind of little equations on it next to a figure or something, or or so it works out okay. I mean, people can do that in one note too. But when Glenna said said it's hard to hard to mark on a PDF online, well, you you could download the PDF like I have most of the books, like you've talked about. You can mm -hmm. open up any chapter and scribble all over it. You know. Hey John, what campus are you on? I'm on I'm on uh, Forest Park. Forest Park. OK, so are you when you teach math at Forest Park, are you using the OER textbooks? Yes, we are. We use okay. we use them um, almost, almost exclusively, exclusively, right? Exclusively. Yeah. OK. Uh -huh. And and a lot of now I'm just being too wordy. A lot of teachers incorporate little pieces of and then we also use something called My Open Math, mm -hmm. which is a testing tool. And a lot of them incorporate pieces of the textbook into the my, their My Open Math lesson. Um, but I always keep a full copy of the textbook on my computer just because I, I can scan so quick and, you know, it's and 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 we, all our all our math books are OER. If you if you you know, if you go back and what well, what's that news tab they talked about earlier this week that if you go in and search, you can look for courses that are free, you know, on the select. If you take a look, you know, there's t 